If a massive tsunami were to strike the Atlantic coast, communities stretching from New England to New Jersey might face the brunt of the catastrophe. Consider iconic landmarks like the Old North Church in Boston or the historic Plymouth Rock. The unyielding force of a tsunami will engulf these landmarks of heritage in a deluge of water. The very essence of New England's cultural identity would be submerged beneath the waves. The looming tidal menace would also threaten the state of New Jersey, where landmarks such as the Statue of Liberty and the Atlantic City Boardwalk epitomize the nation's spirit. A major tsunami could obliterate these icons, relegating them to mere memories. Some experts are now certain about the grim possibility of such a catastrophic scenario happening someday soon. While residents of the West Coast are well acquainted with the earthquake risks associated with the renowned San Andreas Fault, the conversation surrounding the East Coast's potential tsunami hazard has largely remained overlooked or dismissed. Typically, when we think of tsunamis, our minds immediately drift to the Pacific region, but it's essential to recognize that the East Coast is not immune to such threats. The push for increased awareness regarding the potential for disasters striking the East Coast initially surfaced in April 2012. This happened after a series of 15 earthquakes occurred approximately 170 miles east of Boston. While not reaching the magnitude of the devastating earthquakes frequently experienced in Japan, the largest of these quakes measured 4.0 on the Richter scale, a significant event nonetheless. During the same year, several other tremors were recorded off the coasts of Newfoundland and Cape Cod along the Atlantic Continental Shelf. While the Atlantic Ocean experiences fewer tsunamis compared to the Pacific, attributed to fewer volcanic eruptions and tectonic shifts, significant instances of devastating tsunamis in the Atlantic are documented throughout history. In 1755, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake struck Lisbon. Structures crumbled under the immense force, and as the initial tremors ebbed, a harrowing aftermath unfolded. Fires ignited, spreading relentlessly through the streets strewn with debris. Amidst the chaos, a colossal tsunami surged from the depths of the Atlantic. The once vibrant streets of Lisbon were reduced to a haunting silence, where the remnants of centuries-old architecture life submerged beneath the unrelenting force of the tsunami. Historians estimate that around 40,000 people perished. This grim toll underscores the unpredictable wrath that the Atlantic Ocean can unleash upon communities. Then in 1929, the North Atlantic bore witness to another harrowing tale of destruction. Off the coast of Newfoundland, a seismic upheaval triggered a massive tsunami that surged towards the Grand Banks. The waves, propelled by a colossal undersea landslide, reached staggering heights, dwarfing everything in their path. By recounting these historical tragedies, the critical importance of awareness and preparedness along the vulnerable Atlantic coastlines is emphasized. Concerns among scientists are rising due to recent seismic activity in the Atlantic. Scientists are now sounding the alarm that an earthquake-induced tsunami similar to the Newfoundland catastrophe could potentially target the northeast coast of the U.S. Furthermore, some experts have raised the remote possibility of an indirect tsunami striking along the Atlantic coast. The genesis of concern dates back to 1999, when geologists initiated studies indicating instability on the western flank of the Cumbre Vieja volcano in La Palma Canary Islands. Research suggested that with each subsequent eruption, this instability would escalate, potentially culminating in a cataclysmic event where a significant portion of the volcano could collapse into the ocean. According to estimates, this chunk could range from 150 to 500 cubic kilometers. In the worst case scenario, where the chunk measures 500 cubic kilometers, the impact upon entering the ocean would generate a towering water dome reaching 900 meters in height, surpassing the height of Dubai's Burj Khalifa. Following this, the dome would transform into a colossal wave measuring approximately 600 meters high, hurtling westward at speeds reaching up to 720 kilometers per hour. The resulting massive tsunamis would batter the western shores of the Canary Islands, while smaller waves ranging from 50 to 100 meters would impact the African west coast. 
Simultaneously, a formidable wave spanning 500 kilometers in width would traverse westward across the Atlantic towards America. While the scenario may evoke fear, it's imperative to approach it with a measured perspective. Mega tsunamis resulting from volcanic collapses like this appear to unfold over extensive geological time frames, with evidence indicating occurrences dozens of times in the Atlantic alone over the past million years. Thus, while the potential threat deserves attention and preparedness, it's essential to contextualize it within the broader framework of geological processes and historical occurrences. In June 2023, the Northeast faced the impact of a significant storm. Initially regarded as relatively minor by the National Weather Service, it was classified as a low-end storm. However, the aftermath presented an unusual phenomenon. More than 30 tidal gauges along the East Coast registered six-foot waves, resembling a tsunami. Yet, investigations revealed it wasn't a typical tsunami event. It was more accurately described as a meteor tsunami. Unlike tsunamis triggered by earthquakes, this event was attributed to atmospheric conditions generated by the storm itself. The northeast storm likely caused fluctuations in air pressure significant enough to generate tsunami-like waves. The exact mechanisms behind this occurrence remain unclear. Some experts theorize the storm's intensity played a role, while others speculate about potential shifts in the continental shelf east of New Jersey. Despite the striking resemblance to a tsunami, the water movement observed in Rhode Island didn't align with typical storm surge patterns, adding to the mystery surrounding the event. Despite the looming risk, it seems that several areas in New Jersey are still underprepared to face a tsunami. The evolution of tsunami monitoring systems from their inception in the 1920s to their current state is undoubtedly fascinating. Today, our monitoring capabilities have significantly advanced, allowing for real-time detection and warnings of impending tsunamis. Modern systems are typically triggered by seismic activity, which provides critical minutes for forecasting and issuing alerts to vulnerable regions. Thanks to the rapid speed of seismic waves, earthquakes can be detected almost instantaneously, offering ample time for forecasting and targeted warnings. Japan stands out as a prime example of a tsunami-ready nation, boasting a nationwide warning system that springs into action within minutes of an earthquake. The efficiency of this system was demonstrated during the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, where the warning was issued within just three minutes, underscoring the life-saving potential of preparation. However, it's crucial to recognize that effective tsunami warning systems extend beyond mere detection. Communication plays a paramount role. Ensuring that warnings reach and are understood by the public in a timely manner is essential for maximizing their effectiveness and ultimately saving lives. However, navigating the tsunami warning landscape isn't always seamless. In the blink of an eye, a tsunami can unleash its devastating force, leaving little time for warning. The 1993 Hokkaido tsunami stands as a chilling reminder, striking mere minutes after the initial quake. Nevertheless, effective warning systems, particularly when given some distance from the epicenter, can still prove instrumental in saving lives. The progress of tsunami warnings is a testament to human resilience in the face of natural disasters, with each chapter etched into the annals of history. Despite the challenges and occasional setbacks, these systems represent our ongoing commitment to safeguarding coastal communities and mitigating the impact of tsunamis. From the devastating tsunamis that struck Hawaii in 1946 and 1960, propelling the state into proactive action, to Japan's rapid and decisive response to the 2011 disaster, each chapter in the history of tsunami warnings serves as a valuable lesson in innovation and resilience. These events have spurred advancements in technology, communication, and preparedness, empowering communities to better anticipate, respond to, and mitigate the impacts of future tsunamis. By harnessing innovation and learning from past experiences, we continue to strengthen our ability to ride the waves of adversity and safeguard lives and livelihoods in the face of natural disasters.